Alright, uh, hello, and this is the Chip Master. And uh, in this uh, demo video, we're gonna talk about uh, protection and isolation circuit on a notebook. Alright, so on the uh, laptop motherboard, there are several types of isolation protection circuit, and we're gonna look at them briefly. Right, this is a demo video. Right, so I'll uh, explain some schematic reference, and I'll sketch a timing reference, and then uh, explain each section. Alright. So as I said before, we're going to look at isolation and protection and uh, looking at the presentation here, right, uh, we have a, a handout here. So when first, when there is no power to the motherboard, right, that's without the main battery or adapter, right, through a button cell battery or a coin cell battery, right, to produce VCC RTC, which is the RTC well power supply, right, for the salt bridge, right, and uh, the RTC circuit for the salt bridge to save CMOS information date and time right so running date and time all uh, that is running when the adapter and the main battery is removed right so that is constantly providing power for the RTC well right the next is second step is to connect the adapter or battery right so it goes through the isolation protection right circuit to produce the common point which is either 19 volts or 11 volts which is from battery okay so this is the the, the process right so first CMOS battery providing CMOS information on the RTC well and then you're going to connect either adapter or battery and then it will generate the 19 volt rail so uh, you know looking at the different uh, types of isolation and protection circuit is very important and uh, I have here a the schematic right and uh, we're going to look at them in reference so we have first we have here the a compal which is a LA7912P and uh, as you can see we have an isolation and protection MOSFETs for the adapter here and we have for the battery over here see PQ11 right we have another one here with, oh, sorry first these are uh, N channel MOSFETs right we have this one is a LA9014P and as you can see here we have n channel mosfets here right p channel sorry so we have two p channel so this is another type so some have n channel right some isolation protection have n channel mosfets as it adapter isolation mosfet and some has p channel for its isolation or the adapter isolation we're going to look at another one here which is the pwm step down as you can see it b plus point this is the common point rail here b plus not here right this is not the common point this is the common point this is a compound motherboard so you know b plus is the main common point rail as you see it's going through two mosfets to step down the voltage and this voltage is all put in and at the same time the battery is also coming so the battery voltage and the adapter voltage is basically connected together this is known as the hybrid technology that is implemented first with apple so apple was the first machine that started out with this uh technique of creating the isolation and protection to generate the common point voltage and we also have here Lenovo which is the L480 or the L580 series and this is the type C which is the four switch step uh, so it can boost and buck regulator circuit so as you can see we have a pair of uh, um, uh, dual channel MOSFET here and we have another dual MOSFET here so PQ101 and PQ102 which is two MOSFET integrated this is known as a composition MOSFET and uh, there are two MOSFETs in one as you can see we have a coil here in the center so this is the charging IC as you can see BQ25700 and this is a type C connection for the isolation and protection circuit and uh, as you can see this is um, BBUS which is coming from the type C connection and then it is coming through these two MOSFETs to both are to step down right buck and boost so this circuit is a four switch boost regulator circuit all right so we're going to look at them uh, in the paid class, I'll teach you more about the Type C buck and boost uh, regulators, four switch regulator circuit, a very complex circuit, right? With the use of oscilloscope to check the working conditions of the circuit, right? You have to use oscilloscope to know when it's boosting and when it's bucking, right? So you can know if it when the circuit is working properly or not, especially for the Apple machines, the A1706 and the A1708 series, <coughs> all the way up to A21 series, all right? So let's go back to the presentation. All right, so uh, so as you can see, for the isolation and protection is through the battery or 
the adapter to produce the common point the common point meaning where the battery voltage and the adapter voltage meets that's a common point okay now let's, let's look at the next so, uh, circuit so as you can see we have adapter here 19 volts and we have battery from here so all the voltages so the voltages comes from either two these points here all right and uh it will produce help common point voltage to produce standby power supply ram power supply bus power supply right gpu power supply the cpu power supply and the charging right and this is the inductor to charge the upper and lower mosfet is a pwm circuit upper and lower mosfet and the inductor and a filter capacitor right and um why do does a laptop have an isolation and protection circuit can anybody tell me why a laptop has an isolation and protection circuit well the purpose of the isolation and the adapter a protection and isolation circuit is to form a protection where it comes from battery voltage or adapter voltage all right so um i have here a an image that i've uh, drawn all right as you can see here all right we have uh, a sketch here that i've sketched all right and as you can see we have let me just zoom in all right so we have the adapter side over here and we have the battery side over here so as you can see we have adapter voltage coming in and uh, as you can see there is a diode in this second mosfet this is known as the rb fed reverse bias mosfet and uh no this is the rb fed this is the adapter fed cutoff mosfet right so this is acting as a protection so in the 19 if 19 volts and if the adapter voltage and the battery voltage meets that's a large short circuit that will burn the adapter and burn the battery and that can cause fire so that is why they have an isolation to isolate to separate right so they don't meet if both voltages come together then that will cause a large short circuit so uh let me get my point to fix here <coughs> all right so uh point to fix so. all right um, it's open oh yes there it is all right. open too much <laughs> All right, so that's causing a large short circuit here. So if the adapter voltage meets here, and the, sorry, the battery voltage and the adapter voltage meets at the same time, then it will burn the battery and immediately burn the adapter, and that can cause fire, right? So that is why we have an isolation and protection. So, the adapt so in adapter mode, the voltage will flow through this MOSFET, right? As you can see, there's a body diode, and this MOSFET will automatically flow this voltage, but the voltage will drop to about 18 volts, because there's a body diode which has a, a voltage drop of about 0 0.7 volts right and that will drop to about 18.8 .8 voltage right so the, a charging chip which is the controlling the gate of these two mosfets these are the working conditions of the charging chip must be checked in order to, for the charger chip to control the output switching of this mosfet so this mosfet is a p channel mosfet as you can see when the voltage at the source is less is voltage at the gate sorry is less than the voltage at the source then it will conduct and it will switch over and you will get the full 19 volts right and full current from the adapter when this voltage flows without conduction what will happen that you will get the voltage and then it will uh the current will be too small and that can cause power down so you can generate the pch power supply you can generate 3 volt and 5 volt standby right but when you press the power button it will power up the system and then power down because the current is insufficient right so it's not getting the full current from the adapter to for the to satisfy the system all right so so this is your uh, adapter isolation mosfet so it's two mosfet so as you can see as i said before so when this charging chip controls these two mosfet it will produce the common point rail which is here as you can see 19 volts there right and it is going to all upper mosfets drain spin see on a pwm circuit the 19 volts goes to all upper mosfet drain spin all right as you can see we have another set of pwm here which is 
uh, which PWM power supply this is a PWM control chip which is controlled the power supply for the PCH power supply and it's controlling 3 volt and 5 volt standby power supply to power the PCH the embedded controller right the star the sound card the LAN card and so forth right we also have the graphics card as you can see the 19 volt rail is coming to the upper MOSFET uh, drain spin Right, this is the source and this is the drain and as a typical PWM circuit and then it's going to this graphics card power supply we also have the CPU core supply which is another common point rail and all the 19 volt common point voltage and adapter voltage is going to the upper MOSFET drain spin right so in a normal PWM circuit when the two MOSFET switches it, it step down and creates a buck uh, series of switching and producing High, high current of uh, voltage with high current PWM circuit because the larger the switching frequency, the larger, the faster the switching, the larger the current. So this is a switch which is a it conducts, then ground MOSFET conducts. So it creates that pulse of PWM on the front end here, right? On the front end of the the coil right here is this front end and this is the back end and when this MOSFET gets this 19 volts right and this MOSFET switches to ground then you have that high low high low jump pulse right so that's a full duty cycle so this is called the duty cycle so the duty cycle with the current which is the switching frequency as I said before the faster the, the larger the, the switching frequency the higher the current which is producing about normally about uh, a typical can up to about 5 ampere of current can be released from a PWM circuit right because of the inductor so this is not a PWM class so I'm not going to explain in detail all right so as you can see you get the idea of what I'm saying here for the 19 volt rail so from adapter the voltage if the adapter is broken right or the, there's a this MOSFET is broken then it will connect if you connect the battery then this voltage will be generated and it's controlled by the charging chip and this is the battery isolation MOSFET so the MOSFET which is switching that voltage to produce the command point voltage to power the PWM circuits when you switch on or before you switch on the unit all right so these are your MOSFET in physical appearance all right and if the adapter MOSFET as I said before is the adapter voltage and battery voltage meets then that will immediately burn the battery and burn the adapter so that is why you need to isolate and protect your devices sorry all right so that is the purpose of the isolation and protection MOSFETs all right so uh, understanding how the isolation protection MOSFET works is very important in troubleshooting when they are troubleshooting not charging files or no power right if the 19 volt if common point is not generated then you won't have PWM output 3 volt and 5 volts right hence you cannot turn on the system all right so uh, going back to the uh, presentation right and uh, as you can see it is going to provide the different power supplies uh, for the the next uh, section right so as you can see here I have explained here right so next we have a physical appearance of an isolation protection right and uh, let me get my point to fix and as you can see on the image there is a uh, Alright, so as you can see, there is a here we have uh, an isolation and protection. This is the adapter, right? This is the battery connector. So as you can see, the voltage is flowing. Hold on, let me pause. Okay, yes. Alright, so. <coughs> So the, uh, the isolation and protection, this is the isolation and protection, uh, let me pause and get my point. Okay, so uh, as you can see here we have a, a, a isolation and protection as I was saying before. And uh, as you can see this is the adapter section and this is the battery uh, connector. So this is the adapter coming in from this red uh, wire, this is the 19 volts positive. As you can see these large are uh, light green, right, these are where high current and voltage flow through these copper traces right so as you can see the 19 volt will flow through this coil and these are your capacitors right and one set is connected to ground right and this is connected 
to the coil right and this is known as the EMI circuit right EMI filtration right so this is the electromagnetic interference circuit right this is used to filter out any ripple that is generated from the adapter right or from the battery or from the board itself and catches it and discharges it to ground so this is a very important and crucial circuit so that is why many times when you're appearing on a motherboard is and the isolation protection is not working then this coil will burn and these capacitors can burn because of overcurrent and uh, due to EMI filtration and other in, uh, spike that occur on the motherboard all right so as you can see uh, the 19 volts will flow through this coil all right and uh, this is your first MOSFET all right this is the drain spin right as you can see this is a MOSFET I can so I can't tell if it's an N or a P channel MOSFET because I oh this is a charging IC so it's a BQ25A so it's an N channel this uh, charging uh, uh, IC BQ25A normally controls N channel MOSFET BQ736 normally controls a P channel MOSFET all right so as you can see this is the MOSFET and this MOSFET going after conduction is coming to the second MOSFET for, and this is the, the mark so this is the source and this is coming from drain to source right and then once this voltage of the gate is uh, met which is normally 25 volts coming to the gate of these two MOSFET which is controlled by the charging chip right and this is the next uh, second MOSFET which is also controlled by the charging chip and then it will conduct both of them at the same time rather let me just read order right so this is controlled by pin number four right so pin number four of this chip so this is pin number four ac drive right another path is coming to this gate right ac drive when these two mosfet is calm conduct that then the 19 volts will flow from drain to source and from source of this mosfet to drain and this is your adapter current sensing resistor as you can see this uh resistor here is your adapter current sensing resistor right and this is your charging coil right up and lower mosfet and this is your adapter mo and this is your battery mosfet so our battery mosfet 11 volts as you can see flowing from here from from the source and this mosfet will cut off in adapter mode so in adapter mode the 19 volts will come all the way here and stop here right if this 19 voltage come over to here it can burn the battery right because the battery voltage and the adapter voltage cannot be mixed it cannot be combined right so please bear that in mind so this is the isolation and protection so if there's a fault with this mosfet right or any of these mosfet right the adapter will be isolated and then it will flow from the battery the voltage will flow from the battery to the battery isolation mosfet to provide the system with power as you can see these large green light green uh, copper traces this indicates where a large current and voltage are flowing through this uh, copper trace as you can see for the adapter here it is this large green copper trace indicates that there's a large current that is going to flow and this is your common point rail right so 19 volts from here or 11 volts which is coming from the battery comes to this point so that is why it's called a common point where both supply voltage meets but they cannot meet in terms of combining it will burn right so they have to be separated that's why it's called isolation and protection right so if this MOSFET is broken the adapter will be isolated if this MOSFET is broken the battery will be isolated and so forth right so this is the called the isolation and protection all right so we're going to head over to the schematic now and i'm going to uh look at the first uh reference schematic as you can see this is um controlling two n channel mosfet and our charging chip which is bq 2425a which is controlling these two mosfets right and it is going to produce p2 and then after p2 through this adapter current sensing resistor to produce b plus this is our common point as you can see we have the battery mosfet which is pq11 right and this is the battery uh, interface name the positive pin of the battery interface right and it is coming to here to be isolated if it is in adapter mode right as you can see the orientation of the diode so the 19 volts will always stop here right if the 19 if this mosfet is broken and the adapter voltage meets the 19 volts right and the, the 12 volts or 11 volts meets then it will immediately burn the battery all right so uh so this is the normal ordinary 
isolation and protection circuit that we see on uh, every day during the maintenance right so v in which is the adapter interface name is coming from the adapter and then it is coming to here which is needs to be ca con uh, controlled by the charging chip which is coming from pin 4 which is ac drive right so this voltage is coming here normally this is 25 volts right so how do we get this 25 volts all right so first as you can see we have here a charger as i said before this is a bq 2475a which is controlling two n channel mosfets and it's also controlling the charging so the charging chip the charger chip is a crucial and important component in order to con manage the adapter isolation and protection and the production of the 19 volt which is the common point right so you have to know the working conditions of this charger ic you can check the other videos on youtube and uh, you can see I explain the working conditions of most of this chip all right but I'm just gonna do briefly all right so first we have VCC all right so VCC is coming from through an R diode as you can see V in either from adapter or this one is coming from B plus V in and it is also coming from R from battery so if the battery is connected it will flow through this portion right if the adapter is connected it will flow to this portion right so <coughs> that is why they put the R diode here so voltage either from adapter or from battery coming through this resistor as you can see this is a shunt resistor it's a normally a 10 ohm resistor right and this is used to act as a protection to filter or to, to uh, limit current for current limiting check your data sheet the data sheet has all the information about this and this will drop to about 18 volts because there's a diode here and a body diode normally of a silicon diode which normally have a 0 0.7 right 0 point, 0 0.7 voltage drop coming in so it will drop the voltage to about 18 volts at this pin next we need to have adapter detection right we have adapter detection which is ac det which is adapter detection right as you can see right the same v in right coming through this two resistor pq pr60 and we have pr63 which is connected to ground as you can see it now becomes a voltage divider right see this is uh the ground and it, this is the analog ground and it becomes a voltage divider all right and as you can see we have another resistor here right and uh you can these resistors now become parallel so when the resistance is connected in parallel the resistance decreases so adding these two resistors become one so you add 154 and add 65.5 and then the voltage which is the voltage which is the voltage divider which is the formula as you know which is <coughs> normally r1 right divided by hold on let me do it simpler let me do it simpler so, <coughs> right, so R1 plus R2, right, and this is the formula, right, divided by R1, right, and then the voltage, which is 19 volts, right, divided by, so you get R1 and R, R1 plus R1, R1 plus R2 divided by R1 then you're going to divide that voltage by 19 and you get the drop voltage so normally this is 2.6 volts right this is 2.6 volts coming to the pin number 6 right so if it falls below 2.4 volts then we won't have the upper MOSFET drive we won't have AC drive because it's lower than the threshold voltage so if this voltage doesn't have under voltage lock or ULV under voltage UVLO sorry let me just clear the screen so VCC pin must be within 18 volts and it's not under voltage so no under voltage lock out right once this voltage is okay and this is between 2.6 to 2.4 volts then it will produce RGEN which is 6 volts so that 6 volts is going to connect to a diode to boost right to boost the upper MOSFET as you can see gate drive high charge which is to charge the drive high MOSFET so the charging mechanism can work right so the high drive charge as you can see this six volts is connected right 
and it becomes drive high charge which is driving the upper MOSFET right and then it produces that it produces the upper MOSFET which is going to charge to control the production of this MOSFET because it's an n channel MOSFET so the voltage at the gate must be greater than the voltage at its source so once 6 volts come here then the 6 volts will automatically release out of this charging IC so when this 6 volts come out of the charging IC it comes through this 4.7 some 4.12 as long as it's within 4k then this voltage will come to here 6 volts so what will happen is that the voltage on the gate see the voltage at the gate is 6 volts the voltage here is 0 volts so it will full conduct and 19 volts will come here not 18 volts and so 19 volts right and then what will happen this becomes 19 volts will come to the CMSRC pin and so when 19 volts come to this pin it comes to become CMSRC which is coming to here and pin number 3 so this is 19 plus 6 volts which is giving us 25 volts and when that 20 when that 25 volts come it will conduct with 25 volts not 6 volts anymore all right so that is how it works so 6 plus 19 gives off the 25 so we get 25 volts coming out so that's full conduction the voltage at the gate is greater so voltage so the gate oops so the gate voltage right is greater than the source and it will conduct and then we'll get p1 and then this voltage will also conduct as you can see the orientation of the diode if this di if this mosfet is not conducting then what will happen that the 19 volts will flow through this diode and it will drop to 18.8 volts and that is a problem because why the mosfet is not switching so the voltage will flow and drop the pressure and therefore it will produce the 90 volts it can produce 5 volts and 3 volts you can power the system but it will shut off why because this is not getting 25 volts so if there's a fault with this resistor or there's a corrosion or a break on this line then it will cause power down right so you have to please bear attention please pay very close attention to this circuit so and it after so if so when this voltage of 25 volts come to the both gates Right, both gates gets its 25 volts then it will full conduct and you get a 19 volts after coming through the adapter current sensing resistor and then it will produce the common point All right so this is the uh, the process of checking the isolation and protection circuit for this one this is a demo video All right i'll just be brief All right so let me go to the point to fix here and i'll just uh sketch out this uh quick and quickly all right so this is uh uh, BQ24 BQ2475 All right, so let me just extend the page here so I can get more room Beautiful all right, so let's uh, DCC uh, let me Get a selection This is a VZZ pin. First, I'll just get two MOSFETs. and let's just get the diode in place Orientation of the diode, which is on this one. All right, so that's our first MOSFET. So let me just delete this MOSFET since I have to go and uh, connect.
So I'm gonna just duplicate this one. Flip it. Alright, so these are two isolation MOSFETs uh, producing a common pine. Which is controlled by the charging chip here. It's going to here. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. So these two gates are controlled by AC drive. Let's go back to the schematic. The so AC drive. I'm just gonna do this quickly. This is a sketch that I'm just doing for you and then I'm gonna sequence it with steps how to check this one and how to check the other one and so forth and so forth That's the sound of my parrot there, he needs his food, so I'm going to feed him. <laughs> Alright, so this is the DC jack and this is coming from here and that's JPJ1 oh it's got a PJP1 let me just type it in PJP1 So, <coughs> all right, so two isolation MOSFETs. One is uh, connected to PQ, and that's PQ9. Okay. All right. So we have this two MOSFET and uh, after conduction, so VCC. Let me just get VCC first. It's getting its input from the R diode from either V in. So let me just get two diodes quickly and combine them. Let 
We just line them up. So uh, this is uh, V in. One point is from V in. This is V in. And this one is from battery. So I just gonna put ATT. I think it's bad plus. Yeah. Let's confirm. Alright, good. I'm recording. Yeah, bad plus. Good. Alright, so. Right, so these two voltages coming from either from V in, which is adapter, or from battery. But V in, which is adapter, and BAT plus, which is the adapter battery voltage, to produce our common point real voltage. So uh, our common point is right here, which is where the adapter voltage and uh, coming after the current sensing resistor. This is our adapter current sensing resistor, right, and that's uh, right here. And that's PR41. Alright, PR41. Alright. And that's gonna uh, connect with the adapter for the battery, sorry. And that's going to isolate our battery. Oops, let me just draw in this. Alright, so let's uh let's uh copy this one. <coughs> it doesn't matter. Our adapter, our battery isolation MOSFET, and that's also an end channel MOSFET. Let's just connect that right there. And this is PQ11. So PQ11, which is the uh, battery isolation MOSFET, and uh, that is connected to the battery and also controlled by the charging chip, as you can see. This one, that drive, so BQ2475 BQ drive, and here is BQ2475 drive, is connected, this is a low level, right, so it will cut off. So in adapter mode, this will be low, in battery mode, it will be high, and it is controlling the battery discharging. This is their battery discharging signal, see, back drive, and it is also for discharging. Alright, so let me just uh, drive, uh, and uh, it is controlled by our uh, charging IC. Good. So as you can see, it's connected to the gate of the charging. It's the, the battery isolation MOSFET to control the switching, right? And this uh, signal, as I said before, is called EQ twenty four drive. Okay, very good. 
right, so let's save. All right, so this is a uh, LA hyphen uh, 7912P, right, and this is going to be uh, isolation and protection. So I'm going to step it out shortly. Let me just go through and, and, and uh, finish it up. All right. So uh, <coughs> with this technique, I break down the schematic. So it's simpler. So you just follow the steps and uh, you can check each step. So step one. All right. So let's uh, give this a color of uh, 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 red. Thickness maybe about uh, eleven. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're gonna give it a fill color. Let me just put step one, and let's give it a fill color of blue. The color for that one. All right. So step one, you check here, right? Step one, you check here also. This is step one. Oh, I forgot my adapter detection. AC detect, very important. All right, let's rotate this. And this is coming from V in. Okay, this is V in. So AC detect as you can see AC detect is connected to a, a voltage divider right so it's two resistors one connected in ground and one connected to the supply point here connection there all right good and our ground is here all right good so, as you can see, so this is our adapter detection and it, it, its name is called AC detect same name A 
ABC detect. Alright, so this is uh, V in. So this is V in point right there. Alright, and then we have. Alright, so, uh, so step one, uh, step two. It should produce a linear voltage RGEN. And that's an output, six volts. And that's called Look for it's normally connected with uh, AC OK or oh, AC OK is pulled up by a 3 volt linear. So RGEN you see that's an diode and that's going to produce oh, the name is not written. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Let's see if we can find it. It's not mentioned. Oh, here it is BQ25 volts. Right, so BQ25 boost. Let's copy and paste it and see the whereabouts of it. On the page, yes, that's it. Alright, so that is one, two, and three. Alright, and then uh Four. and then five or common point which is B plus This is our our B plus point is right here. That's our common point, and this is five. So you check your last. make sure that in adapter mode so that by default I'm normally teaching adapter mode so this this should be low level the battery will be cut off alright okay good alright so now it's 20 so this is the steps alright so this is the normal ordinary or not ordinary isolation of a protection circuit right in the paid videos I'll teach you about the buck which is a step down uh, P, uh, PWM which is a buck PWM uh, P, uh, command point which is generated with a smaller voltage normal about 12 volts and that's a hybrid and I, I will explain each and every sections and every uh, working conditions and how to check and some precautions on what to do and what not to do when troubleshooting during the maintenance of a PWM step down command point real voltage okay so uh, Understanding this technique is very important when troubleshooting isolation and protection 
all right and it's the different types of isolation and protection circuit and how to identify them when it comes to the type c especially for the that's the newest architecture the type c and uh how it works and using the do it yourself adapter uh inter in creation to create and to troubleshoot isolation and protection and short circuit all right so i hope you uh all uh, enjoyed this video and uh, thanks again thank you for watching